who we were given a little discussion about wood and I want to finish up what I think is uh, some significant uh, information for you if you go back to that video you'll know we took our wood and uh, made piles took out the lightest wood sorted it by A to C grain so now we have this wood and I want to be real careful about this is the wood that we're going to use we're going to use the top of that pile that we got we're going to break it to A to C and then we're going to, if you want to go back and review uh, video 32 uh, now we have this pile of wood now that we have this we have this stack of wood and we've broken it down by let's say this is the lightest on the top and the heaviest on the bottom lightest on the top heaviest on the bottom lightest on the top heaviest on the bottom you really only need about four shelves or four areas and somewhere on this video or on one of the future ones i'll show the rack that i use and this is sixteenth three thirty second eighth and quarter these are really the only sizes you need except for outlines of tails and things like that okay now what we want to do is I want to make a little sketch of an airplane here. So let's just let's just use a typical stunt ship. Nothing exotic here. And there's a concept here that you have to get in your mind. If you want to get the most out of the wood you have is the center of gravity. You should mark that off. Now you know from the center of gravity anything forward of this center of gravity let's just draw an invisible line here anything forward of here most of all the nose of the plane even the leading edge of the wing can be a little bit heavy you can use up your heavier pieces of wood here okay you know when you come to your inboard tip you want this to be one of the lightest pieces of wood on the plane, right here. Even lighter maybe than the top block. The piece out here can be the heaviest block you have in the shop. Save, save the money on lead. You know if you have two flaps, two pieces of quarter inch sea grain, let's use the light one here, use the heavy one here. Same on the tail. If you have two equal pieces and you make two elevators, they're obviously mirror images of each other, use the heavy one on the outside light one on the inside same with the wheel pants if you carve up two wheel pants and they're dead equal use the light one here use the heavy one on the outside so just getting this idea in your mind is important but now it gets to be what I'll do is from the center of gravity back I do this I make up a an invisible in my mind let's just call it this and what I want to do is, it, within this circle, I want to use the heavier wood, a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, real light, super light, and back in this last arc, I want to have the lightest wood possible. So what I want to do is take the wood off the top of the pile, that goes here. Off the middle of the pile, it goes here. Off the bottom of the pile, if you get down that far, okay as you get closer to this forget the front of the center of gravity because you're probably going to add nose weight anyway it's this back half of the plane it's and I'd say in order of importance elevators must be the lightest wood you can possibly have the rudder the stab the block these are pieces and even the sides these are pieces that you really want to be your lightest, lightest, lightest wood. Then as you get up here into the flap area, wing ribs, sheeting, can be a little bit heavier. You can get into that second circle. If you keep this, this little concept in your mind of where you want the weight, you can do it also. It's okay if you do it this way, if you make up the side view of the ship that you're going to build. Put the center of gravity on there, and now just start to measure back. take a compass so this would tell you that this piece of wood 
should be lighter than this piece of wood. This piece of wood should be lighter than this piece of wood. And write down, if you have, it, and of course, obviously, if you have choices, if you don't have choices, well, anything from the center of gravity forward, from the CG forward, you know almost every plane on the planet needs some nose weight. So, why skimp up here? Let this be is solid for durability and for a good motor run. Let the nose be solid. You know if you use super lightweight on the wheel pants, you won't have to hollow them out as much. It'll, they'll make them a little bit more durable. But you might want to check that after you've built a, a, say you've built plane one and it came out that it needed heavy wheels. Well, you could leave the weight in the wheel pants then. If it was the opposite way and you had to take all the weight out to get, again, that's the vertical CG, to get that vertical CG right, you want to go by the previous plane and see how it came out using your building techniques. And you may be able to get it so you can put the weight, if you're going to put a half ounce of weight into a wheel pant wheel assembly, let it be in the wood. Then it'll do some good. Why have a real hollowed out paper thin wheel pant that's going to crack and then have to put one ounce wheels in? Doesn't make sense. Just as stupid would be drilling holes in the motor mounts and the beams and everything up here and then add an ounce of nose weight. Dumb. Just plain dumb. So if you keep this concept in mind, this kind of radar beam thing, you can figure out based on the wood that you have where the light wood is going to go, where the medium wood, and where that heavy wood is going to go, assuming you're going to use it all. Now just about every, everybody I know is always looking to make next year's plane lighter. Well, that's good up to a point. Now, here's, here's the point here. Let's use a nobler for an example, because this is a, something we can all relate to. If we have a nobler, and this year's nobler, let's, let's just say weighed 50 ounces. That would be on the heavy side of where we want it to be. And we want to lighten that nobler up. We want to make it a little bit lighter. There's a lot of ways we can make it lighter and not pay a price. If we used all six pound wood and let's say there were 20 ounces of wood in this aeroplane and we went and put four pound wood we would have a saving. Now the wood in the aeroplane would be, and we don't know what the amount, because some of it is plywood and some is motor mount wood. Let's say we could get it down to 14, 15 ounces. Because you can't really lighten up the hardwood part of it. But, but it's still wood. So we could shave some of this weight just in using good wood. So by having it we would still have the same finish. Now we would have a 46 ounce ship. Now that's a good way to do it. Now, there are some bad ways to do it bad ways is the most obvious thing people do that I've seen that ruins an airplane is they drill holes in the motor mounts. When you do this you save about a half to three quarters of an ounce and you may as well end the motor mount right at that point. This is doing absolutely nothing to the plane. Another bad idea things that don't that look like they work in the middle of the winter and then when you go out in the spring they don't work sixteenth ply they try to replace it with thirty second or even some people sixty fourth now what this means is this ship should last forever tradition is a good example of that this plane may make it through the season this plane may make it to the nats now i'm not going to say one way or another i know some people are taking eighth inch wood and laminating it with carbon cloth and saving some weight by doing that. Now, Randy Smith has pioneered this. I, since I haven't personally built a plane this way, I'm not going to comment on whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. You can look around and you can decide for yourself if this is worth a half to three quarters of an ounce. I'm suggesting, since I have built planes with all these various plywoods, that this is definitely out. This is not my style. I would rather have the half ounce saved in paint. And this, the plane will last forever. And most of the time when I spend all winter building a plane and I knock myself out finishing and buffing, I want forever aeroplanes. 
Now that deals with nose construction. I want to deal with wing. If you make a foam wing, and I can deal with pattern master numbers real easy here, and you use built up, like the cardinal kit is shown, rod or jig method, the foam wing, the built up wing, one ounce to two ounces max lighter. That's a good way to lighten up a wing. Here's a bad way, is to take a foam wing, any foam wing, and put a spar in it and not glass the center. If you don't glass the center, th these are the things that I've found that haven't been worth trying. Okay, I took foam wings and just glassed the center of the wing. That was a saving in weight, no doubt about it. Saved a quarter to a half an ounce. Foldomatic. Now I've seen some two wings this year, one at the team trials and one that I had heard happen to Bob McDonald. He had made some super light wings. See, here's the point. We don't want to make a wing that's so light that it folds, bends, or breaks. We want to make it as light as possible and still keep the integrity. I know the lightest way I've been able to make wings is by using the glass ellipse method that's on the videos. If you haven't seen those videos, get a hold of them. This is stronger and lighter than any spar. There is no spar in that wing. The only, the only wood in that wing is if you're going to use f wing mounted gear, you put the gear clips in and then glass around it. That method is shown on the videos. Okay, I have not used this method successfully. This way I have seen wings fold, seen them break or bend, or even worse, that they just come out just as heavy as, as a normal foam wing with the glass ellipses. This is green away technology. You don't see a lot of green away wings folding up on the field. This is the way I suggest you do it. And what I suggest if you're really, really hot to save weight, if that's the primary thing, do a built up wing, put the gear in a body instead of the wing, that'll knock another ounce out of the plane and make it a lot better to fly on grass. You'll save an ounce or two by doing a built up wing. If you do a foam wing, do the glass ellipses, that'll save you an ounce over the spar and glass in the middle of the wing method. But, but these are good ways to do it. Okay, bad way is, as I said before, when you, when you eliminate all the wood in the middle of the wing here, if you notice on a cardinal kit, for instance, on a cardinal kit, the wing sheeting comes up like so, and then this piece has an angle to it. That's not a random thing. That angle is there for a reason. You know, this gives you extra strength, and you don't get a stress riser this is a good way to do it, a good way to build yourself a nice light wing. Uh, Brzozowski's wing and what I saw it looked real nice. Now what you want to make sure you do is when you join that wing in the center, when you join it in the center, you have the two spruce spars, and I call them kite sticks. Let's make this a little bit, you have, you have a spruce spar coming in this way, a spruce spar coming in this way. You want to make that triangulated piece in between, add a spruce, and make sure this is an epoxy joint right here clamp it front and back, let it dry overnight, and then run some carbon fiber right across it, epoxy and carbon fiber, unidirectional carbon fiber. And that's the lightest, strongest way of all of making a built up wing that won't fold on you. Again, a couple of good ways to save, save weight on the finish. Okay, my, my best, best advice on a finish is to get all the wood block sanded and vacuumed clean before you put any dope on it. Vacuum out all the dust, get on two to three coats of light coat, thin 50-50 or 60-40, a little more thinner than dope. Okay, sand it down again with maybe some 400, vacuum it again, get it clean. Get on the tissue, double O silk span seems to work the best. If you're doing a built up wing, use medium. Get the tissue on, get two to three more coats of light coat, same thing, 60-40 or 50-50, depending on your conditions. Get this all block sanded out, nice and smooth. That's the substrate. Spray on a coat of silver. Pick out the mistakes, sand off the silver a few times. This is all on a video, no sense going through this over and over again. Okay, and at this point in time, 
make sure you don't have more than four ounces of finish on the whole plane no matter how you do it if you do sand off the silver if this is five ounces sand off the silver this is where you can save the weight and all the sanding you do is going to be in the substrate and base and then from this point on you get your color finish and if you're going to use acrylic dope or uh, any, of the, any of the other finishes and I don't suggest anything except acrylic lacquer or dope you're going to keep that finish down in the 7 to 10 ounce range 7 being probably the best on the planet 10 if you get sloppy and decoupage it a little bit this is a good place to save weight in the 7 to 10 ounce range in, in not putting on the last coat of clear in doing the sanding early on what happens when you have rough just exaggerate rough wood you tend to fill this all in with filler the finish winds up weighing 10, 12, I think in Lampione's case he probably went even higher and then after the clear and everything's on here you start sanding it down well the first thing happens is you start going through in spots but you still have all this extra paint and filler on here and it's not necessary it's really not necessary so if you think about this you can save some weight with wood selection save some weight with construction methods in the fuse in the wing save some weight in the finish and if you do this if you knock an ounce or two out with wood an ounce or two out with doing built up instead of foam just as an example and knock an ounce or two out of the finish you'll have six to seven ounce lighter plane the motor will have a motor run you know and you, you have it and you won't have a fold omatic you will have the best of all worlds and that's what we're striving for is if you're going to lighten up a plane do it logically do it a little here a little there and a little there don't run out and try to make the whole plane out of three pound wood and use a cardboard instead of plywood drill holes and things try to pick a method that you feel comfortable building with and try to do your finishing in a way that most of the sanding and most of the, the leveling out is underneath the silver not on top of it and you'll wind up with that overall package that the package is lighter and you haven't paid the price because there's an awful lot of light chips that don't have a motor run an awful lot of light chips that fold the wing or just flex and that's just as bad and an awful lot of light chips that don't have a nice finish they just look you know they buff through in spots and they're sloppy and yet there's still 12 ounces of paint on a plane no good if you do it this way you'll have it all now this week we're going to be going up to the mass cup mass cup is one of our favorite contests we get to see a lot of the new england people we'll get some of it on video if we possibly can one thing nice about the mass cup is they have the fly off for the mass cup between the intermediate advanced and expert uh... a lot of the uh... The tension mounts as you try to get your last flight and win the mass cup of course uh, a lot of fun that's a good part of the contest but we're going up with alternative methods is we're going to go up friday and this is a this is a good idea maybe you can use this here to your own advantage i'm going up friday with my wife and we're going to go antique shopping now the reason i say this and this is part of my program is because I like to combine I don't want to be away from my wife for three days at a time this way I can kinda of do something for her that she'll enjoy then what we're gonna do is Saturday we're gonna to try to spend most of or all of the day with Dave's new plane you've seen the carnivore and we hope we get some weather we can do some trim and some prop work and pipe work and motor work and whatever and we'll try to get some of this on video for you and then Saturday night, we have the uh, the mandatory party, dinner, do some socializing, bitch and moan to each other about things. And then Sunday, we have the contest. Now, this is an important concept to me anyway, because I see an awful lot of people who don't who don't include their wife in on the weekend. They would go for three days in a row and maybe the wife is just sitting there looking at the moon or something. Well, this system has worked well for me, is to combine some other kind of a trip with a two-day contest. And this has worked real well for me. 
I'm looking forward to the contest for a lot of reasons. Dave Cook has uh, thought maybe or maybe not, we don't know yet, if we're going to try something new in the way of judging. Uh, again, this week, what, what happened is I got about 15 phone calls about things relating to the team trials, and that has kind of snowballed into, uh, well, we won't go into it now, but a lot of people have a lot of good thoughts and ideas as to how we should be changing things to make it a little more fair and a little more equitable. Maybe we'll get to try some of these things at the Mass Cup. Don't know, can't promise, but we will be going. We'll get some video, and we'll try to do what we can. Massachusetts for the Mass Cup meet. This is Saturday. This is going to be a two-day contest and we're basically going to try to spend the whole day with Dave Saturday to trim out his new plane which has never been flown yet. We we'll try to get some of the film at a nostalgia contest. We spent yesterday shopping for antiques and we bought some cute little stuff but uh, basically here of course the whole crew from New York is here. Bobby Provolone, Lampioni, Borelli, all the women. Okay, so basically we're gonna go over and help Dave get this new plane sorted out. That's so great. And now what we always do with a brand new plane, Dave has already run this a couple of times on the ground. He's got the engine from the old plane. This is the old plane, took the engine, Super Tiger 51, big gym engine. Woody Midgley tank, his father made the tank. That's the one showing the videos, right? And what we're basically going to do here is get the engine one more run on the ground, make sure everything's tight, take it apart, tighten up all the bolts, get some lines and handle adjusted for it. It's an absolutely perfect day. Anybody hasn't been here, this is where they hold the Nats at Westover. Some interesting uh, big transports go in and out of here all day. And we. Uh, I'm hoping uh, the day holds up so we can get a lot of good flights on this plane. This is the first time this plane's ever been flying. You know my pension for getting these flights on video. So that years from now you can look at them and, or you can at least have an idea of what kind of an experience it is when you build a plane similar to this. And both of these uh, could be cardinal kits. They're in theory, in reality, they are cardinal kits. You can run right out and uh, Expect pretty much what we're going to have today. Hope we get some good flights. Most of all, see some of the problems you have on a new plane. The first thing is always to get a bench run on it. It's your film, I'll give it 65. Uh, yes, I will. Uh -huh. yeah. Usually getting rid of. <laughs> Fly this plane. Every round. From what do you, would you play? Now, as always, I've said it a thousand times, how important it is to get a ground run. Don't just go up and fly the first flight without a couple of ground runs. Something gets into the filter and whatever, and you have a nine-minute lean run, or if you have a VMAX, it could be a 20-minute lean run. Like with any pipe engine, it's been sitting in a car overnight. Usually the first day the time of the morning, pays to flip it over. You got any lighter fluid with you, Dave? Sometime yeah. a shot of lighter fluid will take yeah, care I of that. Anybody doesn't know the trick, the trick is with a pipe engine, get a couple of drops of lighter fluid, which we call Zippolini in there, and then watch your finger, the nap that kicks it right off. Now, 
as always happens with a new plane, it's getting it started the first time during the day is always a pain in the neck here. And it's cool out here now, it's been sitting here. But, you know, again, we're not editing things out of the video, we're trying to show you what we really went through. Realistically, this is what you can expect to go through with any new plane, a lot of little teething problems. Also, on any cold day, that lighter fluid will help even a Fox 35 start up. Good trick in cold weather. And while we were working on Dave's engine, it looks like Joe crashed his plane. I don't know how this happened. Joe Ortiz. I'll go over there later and take a look at it. Yeah, that looks like it's... I don't know what happened. Hey, Joe, what happened? We'll go over there later and see what happens. Geez, what a way to start the day. Okay, now while we were bench running the engine, some of these real cute zip ties, oh, here they are. Self-destructed, these real pretty zip ties of pink ones and green ones. Maybe you'd want to check these before you go flying a plane. What we did, we replaced them with the heat-proof Pro Stunt products. They're a little more expensive, they're 60 cents a piece instead of a penny or whatever the other ones are, but they really do, uh, they don't self-destruct. Uh, half of the fuel is out of there now, Dave, don't forget. We ran half of the fuel out and then I shut it off. This is a good little tool for putting on the zip ties. Warren T. Art gave me this. It's from AJ Products, Boston, Michigan. to get this on a video. Warren T-Art, you could call Warren T-Art if you want to get one of these little tools for tightening. It's like a little gun that tightens the zip ties. We had that problem with the zip ties. Now, he's changed the plug and it still has a rough sound. I don't like this. Now, we're going to put a different plug in there. Looks like we're going to have a little action here while we're uh, getting ready to get Dave's plane sorted out. Again, what I'm telling you here, and I'm trying to show it, I try to show each new plane that we work on, that you have these problems and it's, now this plane has not been in the air yet and we've replaced the zip ties, the plugs, and the head gasket just to get it as, get as many of these things solved before you go out and have a dead lean run. It sounds like a little minor thing. It's a very, very important thing. Sort the plane out, get the motor running real good on the ground. Not a minor thing. All right, the purpose again is we're trying to show this stuff doesn't fly right off the board. Even an expert like Dave Midgley is having little teething problems while the plane is new. We changed the plug. Again, got the zip ties all changed. We want to get a nice clean run. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is use my fuel. His fuel is a year old. We're going to put my 5% that's fresh, only about a month old. We're going to run the rest of this fuel out and put the 5% into flight. Now, Woody Midgley has joined us on a circle with his Thunderbird. We've got about 15 people here now. Sadly, it looks like Joe has lost the plane for good. He was doing a loop after the pattern was over and there's no breeze, you're in dead air and the plane just 
kind of floated right in at him. Dave Cook has the tent set up, the scorekeeping. All right, we ready to fly this? Or you want to run it once with the 5%? Well, let's see. Do we want to eliminate the detonation first? Or see if we can... I want to put the 5% in. Run it once with 5%. That's still detonating. We're still getting that rattly noise in there. I don't really like it. I'd like to get that sorted out before we fly. They don't have any coffee over there, do they, Woody? I could go for some coffee. Boy, we, we're getting treated to some real C5A stuff here. Anyway, we changed the motor in Dave's plane, put the other motor in. He uh, had cleaned off all the carbon in the first one, and it, it just didn't feel right. Felt like I had some kind of a little bind. I don't know, we'll uh, let Big Jim check it out. We ran this on the ground a few more times, and he's got the lines. We've got pretty much everybody over here checking out the first flight. First flight of the carnivore. Bobby Provolone in full dress. Full dress uniform. We had dinner with this silly bastard last night. Uh, I'd settle if you just pay for dinner last night. You try to chintz me on that meal. Just because he has a heart attack, he thinks everybody feels sorry for him. We don't feel sorry for you. Do I own a honey year old house? Yep, yep. I have a hundred year old apartment with roaches. <laughs> the roaches are a hundred years old. He really does have roaches. <laughs> Don't ever go to his house. He has big time roaches. He has roaches the size of Big Jim's nose running around there. <laughs> anyway, the carnivore, the first flight of the car. I don't know why we're so happy today. We have tune pipes on it. Tune pipe roaches. That's the great thing. Interesting, we had Dave Cook, oh where's Dave, here he is over there. We had Dave Cook over here before for a uh, little discussion of the team trials, maybe some of the things we can and cannot uh, do to improve the next one. Certainly everybody's trying like hell to uh, make suggestions that are positive in nature and uh, help us have some, uh, a more satisfied group of contestants I guess would be the best word. Even, even people that made the team aren't happy, I don't know what this has there. Oh Dave's gonna fly. Here's a real treat. Anyway, uh -oh. back to the carnivore. We're here to do the carnivore, not Dave Cook. Look at the See what it feels like. Conditions, Midgley's first flight of the carnivore. Beyond belief, I think he's gonna hit me with the plane if I don't back up. The carnivore, beautiful cardinal kit. Slightly modified so it doesn't look like a cardinal kit. It's always good on these first flights. Now what we're looking for, Something like a decent motor run, consistent, not getting too lean at the end of the pattern, wing kind of level, wing looks a little bit up in level flight, just a little bit. Dave get a general feel for the plane and when he lands we'll see what things we can do. We'll try to videotape just some of his input, some of his feelings 
as to how the plane feels. Does it have good tension at this point in time? What's the speed like? The speed looks okay here. Take it inverted! real nice in the air anyway. Give me some level laps inverted. Let's see what it looks like right side up. It looked a little bit up right side up. Looks okay inverted. taking his first flight. You can see the smoke in the background. We just started getting some wind. So we'll have a little breeze here. We were in kind of dead air this morning while we were working on this changing motors and things like that. Now what Dave did here, this is a good idea for anybody who might want to try it. He has last year's plane, same plane pretty much. Put the same prop, tank, spinner, whatever so that the hardware wouldn't change, made the lines the same length, tip weight the same, same amount of rate rudder offset, so they have a pretty good starting point. And it looks like, uh, from here the way it looks like he's in the ballpark anyway. Certainly I've seen planes that look worse on the first flight. And of course the best tell of all is, now you're over the butterflies in your stomach. Get that over with right away. All right, we'll see what the feedback is like when he comes down. First flight of the carnivore. Dave Cook flying over on the other circle. Flies reverse, backwards, whatever you want to call it. pretty much going to devote this day to help him visually so we might not get a whole lot of video from the other circles. They're going to start the contest soon anyway. I think they're running nostalgia and old time stunt today. Now we have two flights on a plane. After the second flight, we got a good reading on the wing being level. Dave did a whole pattern. And it's going to need a small tab on the top of the outboard wing to get the wing level. So we're going to do that now. We've moved the lead outs back. And you made a, uh, a handle adjustment to the handle to try to equal. How did it feel? More equal or less equal? No, it's got too much up. Okay, then take half of the amount out. You got that marked. And what we do is we mark the cable with ink. Say a quarter inch of the cable, and then go in the full quarter of an inch. Now, in this case, it's too much. Now you back out till half. Just so it's a, just a way of referencing where you are. Well, maybe I'll put that on a video. In fact, we're about halfway back on the leadouts now. It looks like the tracking is real good. What does it feel like? It's tracking fine. An inverted flight, even it was tracking fine. Yeah, it felt pretty good. Okay, and it feels like what? Tighter inside than outside still? Yep. Okay. So I, I want that right, want right on the edge. Make sure the flap doesn't hit it. Looks Corner looks fine, even in the triangles and Is that stuff. Be all right? Yeah, that'll be fine. Probably going to need to be bigger than that, but we'll fly it once anyway. You got good air here. Get flight after flight in on a thing just to get comfortable with it. You don't think that's going to fall off or anything? Do you? Nah, you got tape on it? Nah, that's fine. Yeah. When you go home, make it out of clear plastic and glue it on. You know, or put it on with the bolts and screws or whatever. 
Put two pieces of tape on it if you have to. What do you got? A lot of wax on here? No, no, I've just got it on with tape. Yeah, that's all mine's on with is tape. Well, get it better than that. Get better tape. What kind of tape you have? I, got, I think I got half pieces of tape. Jimmy Varelli down the back circle. I guess they're getting ready to start the contest. So it looks good in the air. Looks great, yeah. I want to get the wing level first of all. Most important thing, get the wing level. The motor run seems great. It was steady right through the whole flight. Now here's a tip that'll help you a whole lot. What Dave's gonna do is take an ink marker. Let's put this on the video. Mark up the cable. Put some ink on it here. And now you have a little reference, like now you can go in half of that thickness. Let me get on a macro lens. It's in the shadow. There okay, you go. You can go in, we we'll take that cable and move it in. See, we can go in half of the amount, all of the amount. And for this adjustment, we want to go in half of the amount, just like that, and then lock the handle in again. This gives you a reference for getting neutral. Now, the first flight, what we had was he had too much down, not enough up. Now he's got too much up, not enough down. Now, if you don't have a reference point on the handle, what happens is you keep going too much up, too much down, too much up, too much down, and you go crazy. If you put a reference point on, the ink acts as a reference point, you can usually get it in one or two shots. Good tip. Okay, we're looking to see if the wing is level here in this flight. It was down inverted. Still down inverted, the tab's got to be bigger. So now what we'll do after this flight is we'll double the size of the tab, just scotch tape it on. When he gets to the point where it's real close, you just keep going up in halves. If it's too big, you cut it in half. Then if that's too small, go halfway. Go halfway in between up or down. The easiest way to zero it right in. It's a lot better than it was. It's still, it's still down inverted by a little bit. Well, let's just let them get some flights on a plane and get comfortable with it. If you've been watching a series of tapes, you know what we went through with Bobby Provolone's new plane. We went nuts the first couple of weeks. Maybe three, four weeks it was just making us crazy. We eventually got it sorted out. This looks like it's going to sort out real quick, though. Once he gets familiar with it. Now, see, it's still down a little bit inverted. Just a little bit down. My guess is Woody we're gonna wind up making a tab twice as big. He's about halfway there. He brought aluminum with him, or does he need stuff? We got a soda can with us? You got a beer can, a soda can? Looks like it has a pretty re you know, pretty reasonable smooth corner, holds the flats good. What we're looking for here is to get it turning equal. It isn't turning faster one way than the other. My guess is we could take some of that nose weight out. He's got a big chunk of nose weight in there. That'll make it better. For now, we have the information we need. 
for the next trim session and we'll uh, wait till he lands and get the bigger tab on. Feels like we're getting some wind here now. Now we'll just go as far into the day as we can. Now on this flight, taking an ounce of nose weight out, larger diameter prop. This is 11.73 blade, Brian Ether prop. Slowed the plane down a little bit. The lap times are slower by about two tenths here. The double size, he's got the copper trim tab. Double size tab looks about right. I think the speed control, the pace is a lot nicer here with the plane flying a little slower. And we're in ideal air. This is really nice, so we don't want to waste any of this time. Now it's important, you know, I, and I hope some of this information, like the little tip on the handle or some of the information, or just seeing how one of these ships gets trimmed out, we hope we're going to be able to do this in one day, or get Dave as comfortable as possible. This prop with less pitch seems to wind up in a wind a lot less. What we wound up doing is taking the Dave's small pipe off and putting on the big pipe. He's got the pipe out of the green cardinal on here now. It's running nice and quiet, in fact. And we're just trying to verify that we have the wing reel level here. We'll look for any spot that it's going real soft. It certainly looks like it turns real nice. For a plane that's only, this is the, I think the fourth or fifth flight. I think this is going to be a good one. Certainly this is coming together as quick as you can expect. Nice top on the hourglass. Nice corner holding the speed nice. So in the time that we've been here, you can go through the trim changes that we've gone through with this plane. Get a feel for just what we've done. The order in which we've done it. Now by taking nose weight out, what we're gonna do now is if it feels too touchy, rather than taking more nose weight out, what we're going to try to do is just move the leadouts back maybe an eighth of an inch to get the tracking back. And getting that relationship between the leadouts and the center of gravity is always probably the single most critical thing in trimming out the plane. And maintaining it as you retrim the plane time after time is important. If you move the CG back, the leadouts should go back. If you move the CG forward, the leadouts should go forward. And it looks like one of the things he's going to want to do is bend the landing gear forward just a little bit. He wound up using 5%. He wound up using my fuel, in fact. Okay. It's just around noontime, time for a little break. Relatively successful morning with the plane, and the air is holding good. They say only only lizards sun themselves on a rock. Here's a human sunning himself. <laughs> Woody the lizard. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, old man. The long, cruel winter. Yeah, Woody, you know how to make a tank. Now if you can only teach him how to land. Well, the gear will stay in. Yep. The rest is me. All right, the nose weight feels about right. Yeah. What did it if you like? want it to turn a little tighter, move the lead outs forward. If you want it to turn slower, turn boom. It's real close. It's tracking, the wing is level, and the motor's running like a motor run. Let's go practice. Let's get some flights. I'm going to take Karen down to the uh, the hangar. You want me to pick up some lunch? Yeah. All right, let me do that, and we'll be back. You can have Woody launch you for a half hour or so. Who's over there in the corner? I'm going to move over there. All right, why don't you move over? Let's see what happened, Just clean, just clean the top. That isn't even a real crash. No. You're just jealous of Joe Ortiz. Just made a combination a Bob, a Bob Hunt rudder. That's a combination cool. Genesis oh, like and Thunderbird here. Nice canopy. Yeah. Holy that's great. the worst part is the repair. Yeah. Canopy, that's not bad either. All right. 
you know anybody that has cannabis. I know it. Woody, you said you weren't going to drink during flying days. I know. Days. I don't and know. And there's not a mark on the bottom. And the rudder was completely intact. So Make it a Dave Cook plane. Put the wheels on top and fly it the other way around. so bad. Gee, I mean, two crashes today. I don't know. It's not a mark. So after a nice lunch break, what's happened is, uh, and we're really happy to see, is Billy Suarez is back. He's got his plane all repaired. And it looks like it seems to be flying okay. And we'll go over and see Bill later and get the story on his plane. This is the one he had crashed right before the Nats. He missed the Nationals in the team trials. And he's got it back together and we're flying. Doesn't look any worse for wear and tear here. And that's one of the advantages I like of having a, uh, a plane like the PM or a PM. Is when you repair them if you have to, you put an ounce or two extra on them and it doesn't seem like the performance deteriorates a whole lot. In fact, Barron's at the team trials was 81 ounces and it seemed like it flew pretty good. We'll go over and see how Billy's doing. Dave's ready to take another flight here. Back from lunch. Getting friendly for the first day here. We've moved circles too. This was a good, I guess as, as far as first days of new planes go, this was about as good as it gets. Too. It looks like the wind is kind of dumping up here. So we'll see what kind of quality of life we have later on in the afternoon here. Real good to see Billy Suarez back though, and good to see we've gotten accomplished what we originally drove up here for in the first place was to help Dave with his plane. It's hotter and hotter. You got to go in on a needle. I hope he's been going in a click once in a while. Did he switch fuels? Or is he still using my fuel? My fuel has extra oil in it, so yeah, we'll see. Keep my flight. Nah, not yet. I'll tape a flight of yours. Don't worry. We know you're a hot rod flyer. Up and coming national champion. Bulbaceous Cook. You're gonna whip the juniors' butts. Do I have that on video? Is this ego I problem, Cook? May not be any. Well, I flew into a building. Right there, Look at this as we're flying. Bombaceous. Yeah, what an ugly okay, face. Okay. Get that face out of here. Does your mother know you're here? My brother is the most toughest opponent I'll, I'll face. I'm the toughest opponent you'll face. You don't fly airplanes. Who are you supposed to be, Michael Jackson with those glasses? No. <laughs> anyway, we're having a good day. Today 
is turning out nice. No complaints. C5A is taking off, giving us some nice weight turbulence to deal with. going to start in Aries. We'll talk to him later. Well, when you decide early on in life that you want to be a millionaire, you got to pay. And the man has obviously decided he's going to have more money than Donald Trump by the time he's 29, so watch out stock market. Watch out Aries. Got a little soft there, baby. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. There are not many people fly in, fly in from the moon. Tom Morris really? flies, flies in, from, in the from the moon. Nice, you're doing the moon. How you doing, guy? How you doing, Tom? Wendy. What's that? Here's your plane. All right, good to see Tom. He's been living in Hawaii, hasn't flown in a while. They're gonna get a handle in his hand before the weekend's out. Now what we're doing now, we, I flew the plane a few times, so I flew it once, he's gonna fly it now. We wanna try to prop the wood prop that I had made up at the team trials. And the wind has come up a little bit and we wanna see if this is gonna penetrate a little better than the three blade we had on there. Watch the neck on the propeller. Make yeah, just don't launch it cock-a-ma-poo here. Yeah, I'm going to let it go nice and easy. I have to do the old... Uh, uh, now we got a different handle on a hand with a little bit longer arms. See if we can get it to rheostat a little better. I want him to be real careful on this flight. Change the handle, change your prop, took all the nose way down. Even a nut on a spinner is an aluminum nut now.
should get another plug in there. That plug didn't sound so good. What's in there now? One of those Fox Miracle plugs? With no idle bar? I don't know what's in there yet. Yeah, I think you'll have to... Want to flip it over, David? No, you can change it this way. Right through. Christ, everybody on the East Coast, I think, flew it. No, there's a couple guys on Hawaii now. Herb's friend, I can't think of his name. I got it written down home. He uh, He's doing Cardinals, too. That's good. It'd be good if you could hook up with them, you know, and get yep. together. Go back in the valley. Woody, I'm going to start. You know, I'm going to start when I go back and uh, I've got to get this guy. Uh, Billy Suarez down the back circle practicing his tail off. He'll be competitive tomorrow. Always a good flyer in the wind. Anyway, what we did get from Dave Cook today, we got all the scores at the team trials. And not a moment too late, only about, well, it's almost a month. Anyway, we'll go home and analyze them and see what we can come up with. I'm trying to come up with some positive, constructive thoughts of change. And it's certainly our event, if we don't change, it's going to turn into world championship wrestling. It's pretty much everybody's conclusion that uh, if you get to pick the judges, you can pick who wins just by picking the judges. Various judges had various people in first place, second place, and third place. There was no consistency to it at all. If you take one judge out of the mix, everything changes. Two judges out, everything changes. Very inconsistent. So we're going to look at some other ways, maybe constructive suggestions we can do. Make that situation a little better. Glad to see Billy's back, flying up a storm. Good to see Tom Morris here. You know, I, I bought it when it just made this. Day. This is pretty near the end of the day. We did, did get a chance to try two different motors, two different pipes, several props. Had a pretty good trim day. And we're running out of battery for the day, so we're going to kind of pack this in. Try to pick this up tomorrow. We'll get the, uh, the competition tomorrow. Seems to be emotionally recovered from losing his plane yesterday. Let's hope so. Guys from Albany are here. The Massachusetts guy there, Scott Smith, has his students that are building the planes down his house here. Billy Suarez is here, Leon Bowen. Doug Cook's son. You said six, so there should be two more. Well, I got my flight in, and it was it was a beauty, believe me. And it's Ray Suarez is getting the best air of the day here, as usual. Best air of the day, Suarez. Call the Bob Barron hotline. Jacoby Myers is stunned. Jacoby Myers and Barron. <laughs> These guys are so bad. 
So bad. Are you taping this stuff? Absolutely. Hey, you're the president. Listen, here's your pamper president. Always dressed in white. Didn't bother taking a shower at home hey. this morning. Hey, you just be pamper president, you get a free trip to China after 25 years of service. <laughs> Whether you need it or not. Of course, it's a one-way ticket, but they don't tell you that. Yeah, we'll see. You ought to see the new team t-shirts. They're almost ready. Oh, my God. Dynamite. 3D holographic. That's what we need. Really? 50 Neon colors. colors. 50 bucks each. Neon colors. One color. <laughs> Ah, he's got the best air of the day. Yeah. High humidity, bud. That's the only thing. <laughs> low humidity. This is a low humidity Wait, flight. A I, I gotta wipe my brow. Because, uh, <laughs> I'm sweating. I just flew. He's sweating. Need windshield wipers. And don't worry, Bill. No matter how bad this flight is, we're gonna have it on video for you. Watch it over and over. Oh no! Hey, hey, hey! Protest, protest. I'm protesting. That's pretty effective. Just, just put it in, this is a test. This is only a test. Listen, Prez. Prez Busso. The Ross Perot of stunt. I'm everywhere. <laughs> I do Welcome to the 1993 Mass Cup Submarine Contest. <laughs> Model submarines being awarded extra beauty points. Hey, where's Connors? He didn't show up? He's up here. Oh, oh, he got here. Oh, okay. He's flying. He's flying right now. Well, I can't shoot out that side of the car. There's too much rain. It'd be worth it, though, boy. Look at that. <laughs> Woo! Is he flying up periscope or down periscope? You've heard of pro stunt? This is umbrella stunt. <laughs> the Umbrella Nationals. Leave it open, Tag. Give him something to do this afternoon. Get the fish out of his toolbox. Oh, what a thrill it is being here. For those of you who missed this contest, you did the right thing. Stay home, turn the heat up, put a log on the fire. It's brisk. It isn't cold here, it's brisk feet feel like they're in ice cubes and cement. Planes turn to nine pounds. Damarel stuffed his plane in on the triangle before it just got too heavy to fly and went bloop. Oh well. Good to see Billy Suarez back in action after a uh, long delay fixing the plane. Hey, Bill, it's good if those tacks get wet. They work better when the batteries get wet. Time, just go ahead and start flipping. Because uh, this kind of wet weather. All right. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> that... You know, we can't tell what a battery's doing to this stuff. No. Nah, forget rain. it. Especially Suarez. He never buys a new one. He keeps using these old ones. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Terry's back to block my view. <laughs> Another protest being lodged. Oh man, come on Suarez, what a joy, what a thrill, am I glad my flight is over, oh my god. <laughs> Busso has to fly yet too? No, he flew. Oh, Busso flew already? He flew before Billy. Oh my god, what a he thrill. He started flight, huh? Yeah. Well, he cheated though, he practiced yesterday and today, that's, that's, that's <laughs> against the rules, can't do that. If you're the pamper president, you gotta just come out and fly. Put some whiskers on that pattern. And of course, Bill being the uh, previous Mass Cup winner two years ago, one year ago, I don't know, is the odds on favorite to repeat. He's like the Paul Walker of New England. Paul Suarez. Paul of New England.
greatest moments of stunt. The day for the B-17s. Traditionally, the winner of expert, the winner of advanced and intermediate, and also they include the beginner, would fly a final flight, the final flight, and they would go by the percentage of the score that your score went up from the winning flight to the final flight, or in some cases, the least amount down. And previous winners have been uh, decided on half a point, third of a point. Always been an interesting thing. Always been a fun thing. Don't know how today's is gonna go, but uh, with this rain, it'll be exciting. It's like a football game played in the mud. A lot of slipping and sliding going on, and we will have a lot of fun.
Looks like there's a lot of tip weight in this thing. It's flying sideways. Better oil those wheels, Bill. It's only rolling three quarters of a lap here. Steve Busso, second official flight. Steve's in uh, third place right now. I never have enough. There's never too much video. There's only not enough and just the right amount. People around the country want to see what a star you are. Now that you're the president and everything. Hey, Bill Clinton be calling you on a regular basis. El Presidente. El Presidente. I told him to quit calling me, so. Comes a palace revolution. Yeah. The guy is a pest. I'll put your home phone right on the cover of my catalog. That'll get you some phone calls from irate cardinal customers. Are they irate? They're all irate. Are they? Hey, let's keep the line for the outhouse neat over there. <laughs> Which pocket is Well, I got a pretty, actually pretty good turnout for a rainy day. The rain has temporarily stopped, not totally. Actually, they have about 20 contestants, so I guess it's a pretty good turnout here, considering considering what's happened at Egypt with the weather. Even at Ron Connorship. Is this Ron flying now? I can't tell you. Yeah, that's Ron. Ron Connors. The closest thing to an amphibious duck. Uh oh, he's in his. Ron's in his underwear again. Hope he's got his pants on. Now from here you can see how high his bottoms are. You can drive a van. He doesn't even go underneath the van. <laughs> they say the only guy that can do that is Ted Fancher. Well, Ron can do it too. You can put a van underneath his bottoms. Look at it. Unbelievable. Boy, the plane just about disappears under the van. Remember we used to tell Glenn Metter we'd do that? We could drive a van out underneath his wing over? Disrespectful. <laughs> no, no wonder the guy's out of the event. You guys harass him so much. Glenn is busy raising geese. Anybody that doesn't know, he's into raising geese. Not where he's concerned. He's hoping they can let you know the people get a thing like chicken. They'll start eating them, and he can make a fortune. Ron the Moonshot Connors, known as the General, General Electric. A new maneuver? Oh, he left out. <laughs> hey, Ron. Ron. Sobriety. Giving Ron the sobriety test here. He left those out last time. He did three. He did two and then came around and did one again. What's going on here, Connors? He's flying out of the roof of a van here. You can see. He's got the moon roof. Over. Can't say the word moon around Ron. Moon roof Connors. Anyway. Back to the expert circle. Dave Cook's grandson getting a uh, one of his beginner flights in here. And he did do a loop this time. Hey, all right. Now, if you think this is funny, this is how they work on these big planes. The, the fuselage doors close around the body and just the tail hangs out. They have this big giant scaffold for working on the back end of the plane. Cool. Use this on our next pattern master. We can make a scaffold for painting a rudder or something. I would 
everybody drinking hundreds of cups of coffee. There's, there's been a run on uh, the restroom here, facilities. The first time all day there hasn't been a line here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here we go. Scott Smith making it to the moon room here. Ah. Second official, Nass Cup, round two. Breezy, rainy, damp, wet feet, cold. Many trips to the outhouse. Feels like it's about 40 degrees out. Everybody's wearing coats and shirts and all kinds of flannel and velour underwear and fuzzy pajamas.
Suarez, second official. He's in, <clears throat> in second place as of right now. Obviously with the good air, things can change in a hurry. Well, it's late in the afternoon and the rain has completely stopped, at least temporarily. It's uh, actually, if it wasn't so cold, it would be a fairly nice day to fly. Just come out and fly and have a good time. All the guys from New York went home. Now, Joe Ortiz, of course, crashed his plane. Borelli, Lampione, they all left early. They didn't fly the official flights. But we still had six experts and experts, so six entrants. So I guess all in all, it turned out to be a halfway decent day. Still have to fly, of course. Second round isn't finished, but uh, we are getting some nice weather here. Ground is still wet. Bill Suarez, second official flight. I can't tell you how happy most of the people are here to see Billy back. He didn't come to the last couple contests, obviously was busy. Missed the Nats, missed the team trials. He was really uh, out of it for a while, but it's good to see him back. second official flight. Leon Bowen, Dave Cook, the judges. No rain, five mile an hour. You can see the breeze on the, uh, the little uh, banner in the back. Real, actually nice, no sun in your eyes weather. You don't even need sunglasses. It's a good day.
Alvarez, second official flight. And we are very fortunate here to get the rest of the flights in under some, uh, well, relative to this morning, some real decent conditions. Same old number I got you from Tampa? Yeah, just leave a message on the machine. Okay. Bob Hunt's old crossfire somehow showed up here today, but Bob Hunt didn't. I don't know what happened here. Anyway, hey, let's see. Rick. Oh, Rick Campbell's here flying right. unofficially. Look at this guy fly. Oh, grease. Oh! Grease is it in. Scott Smith with the original Toon Pipe Prowler here. And the real Scott Smith. The real one, the legendary one, the boombastic one. <laughs> Female rights activist, Scott Smith. Jim Damarell fly his flight yet? 
Earl Midgley is the uh, leader and in intermediate here. Earl the Pearl at 440. Oh my God. Earl. Earl, I'm going to raise the rent. Let's see what we got. Beginner. Brian's ahead of uh, Joey Cook. So far, that's for the fly off here, and of course, it's the percentage you go up. I don't think Damarell didn't fly yet. Let me, get, let me squeeze by, get to the other side here. I got it for like five bucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's tag sale in his house. I started to pick it up. Those things are around if you look. Yeah. It's a lot of wasting time. Yeah. For, for, for yesterday. Again. Can okay. I get your interview here, son? Who's the leader in this contest? You? Yes. You are? Well, actually, he's winning right now. But Who's winning? Like Who's winning? McCarthy? Yeah, Brian McCarthy. Brian McCarthy's ahead? Yep. I see a protest coming. Uh-oh. Ahead by three points. You're, he's ahead? Yeah, he's ahead. Oh, but you're going to fly still. Yeah, I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly after him, and he's going to fly after Yeah, himself. you want to fly last. The judges always balloon when you fly last. Yeah. So, you better tape my flight, okay? I'll tape your flight if I have Good. any battery left. What's your name? Brian McCarthy? He's the one who's in first. Okay, place. now you're the one that's in first. You're like the Paul Walker here, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm t I, and I you're like the Wendy. <laughs> Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Look at that throwing things at me. All right, let me guess who I'm rooting for here. I'm Which one of you guys, have, how much money you got? A buck. A buck? I'll take it. Now, I'll five. influence this contest. I got five. Let's teach him luck. Look, look at these kids. Yeah. This is my fifth buck. Steven's got the... Uh, for a dollar, I can fix it. You can go to China on a I team. I got five. Five? You can go to China twice. What? Three Steve, times. Hey. Good mathematics. Five huh? times. Wait a minute. Steve, look. Here's I've got 203 points. He's got 206. What's How much Steve? money you got, Bucci? Uh, let's see. Couldn't make it past the go-go lounge Here's last 20. night, huh? Go That's buy 20. the judges, okay? Sure. Go buy the judges. Show them. Show them how you get. Hey, Come on, show me. Money. Give me that money. Look. <laughs> Give me that money. Way to go. Now, money talks in the world. You could buy two pipes with this money. <laughs> buy the judges. <laughs> oh, my God. But you got to make sure you give it to the judges, not me, because I... I'm just video king. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, who's King. flying next here? Come on, you uh, bozos. King. King. Who's next? next? That's the second place. That's the beautifulest. He's ne the beautifulest. Who, who got, got the it. concourse award who yesterday? Right? Who got the? That's what I won. Who cares about the Walker Cup? Who got the concourse award? I don't know. These look like Monaco to me. <laughs> Earl Midgley in a, a smothering first place defeat here coming his way. I don't know. Whoop. This guy was so poor he couldn't afford paint. He saved his money. He saved his money to go to the go-go lounge and then he couldn't afford paint. <laughs> Hey, those hands away from my camera. Let's go. Wave to the camera. Say hi, hi nice Wendy, hi. the nicest guy in the world to stunt. Let's just go. Hi, nice guy. Let's just go. Hi, Wendy, your hat's going to blow off in a minute. <laughs> look, look at you guys have no respect. Look, no okay, let me respect. See your hat. Please. Please. You want to buy my hat? No. That's you my lucky hat. Wrong. My you daughter gave me that wrong. for my birthday. Look, you got to fold it like that. What's on totally your... Totally like that. Well, fold it for me. Okay. I want to be professional like you. That's my hat. You, these goddamn kids. Hey, you gotta fold By the way, that. this is my favorite t-shirt. Let's see the t-shirt. This is my favorite t-shirt. Matches my jacket. It's right. Ugly. Says pro stunt. I wear this at work all the time. Oh I'm yeah. Like, that'll get you. That'll get your raise at work. I'm sure. Get you fired you from your job. Your You'll be on welfare like if you wear that more than once. your hat like this. Hey Earl. Do a Earl, I heard you're in first place here. You're smoking them. Yo. Oh my God. Do a close up. Of Drink more Dr. I Pepper. Do a close up of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Really you. Not that cute. Oh, we forgot. We're on TV. Yeah. We're on TV. I hate kids. Better send me a tape of that. Better Even more reason they should that. make birth control mandatory to the age of 70. 
Who's flying now? Let's get some flying up for these kids. No guy. Can't have any fun at these contests. Look at this. This guy is cool. I'm the only one here that's cool. Uh, I'm so cold. Uh, my not my cut, feet are cut, wet. Cut the screen. Cut the screen. But there's the lovely wife saying, when are we leaving? When are we leaving? When are we leaving? When are we leaving? Now to show you who has the best wife here. Billy Suarez and my wife stuck it out. The Borelli woman and the Lampione woman made them go home early. They missed a great flying day, a great contest, a great day in the world of stunt. History was made on this circle today. Hey, actually, Damarell and I think Midgley still have to fly this flyoff, so don't go home yet. Have to stay for the flyoff. Awesome. Yeah, we're playing with it. Is this yours, Scotty? Whose is this? No, this is Hummels. Hummels? Bills? Hey, he's coming along, man. I gotta look, <laughs> gotta look in the mirror more often. <laughs> Smith Stunt School. Smith Stunt School. Wait till you see Wendy's Stunt School when I get this house finished. Thanks. I'm gonna take only totally unqualified brain damaged people. This is, uh, this is the one that's gotta put the class on. Yeah, this is good. Basically, Jim. Suarez, wanna grab my thing? What is it? Uh, Jim Damarell's getting ready for his official, second official kick Windy in the ass flight. I don't know who's going to kick my ass here, Midgley or Earl Midgley or Down. They both love to do it too. Come on, Jimmy, baby, I'm saving tape for your flight. I got five more over here. Forget it. Oh, it nice and warm and sweaty too. Dude. What do you got in there, Rick? That's us. Uh, V Max? Yeah. 40? Yeah, V Max 40. Like I can remember. With a plastic tank or what? A metal? Yeah, plastic tank. Plastic? The only, one, the only one that was big enough to fit. <laughs> <laughs> the metal tank is too long. VMAX power here at the contest. I was kind of lucky. Yeah, I actually remembered which right. handle to put on the airplane. This was a good day for pattern masters. The pattern master, the, the choice in the rain. <laughs> If it gets One, two, and so three fun. pattern masters. Oh God, heaven forbid. <laughs> Questions. The Rick's a little confused. He thinks he's fueling up an outboard engine here by mistake. He picked up the can of fuel for the mercury, mercury oil for the outboard here. What is it? A tie between Twinkie and Twinkie? Now Steve Buzo's on the back circle. Uh, I'm going to get the flight is next. Waldo's flying it now. And I'll get a flight on it right after Waldo. It turned out to be a stun heaven day. This has absolutely gotten better and better as time's gone by. It's an awesome day right now. To the, to the executioner. I'm going to send this tape to Randy Smith to show him how his motors run up here. Give him a nice lean run. newsletters how he never gets a lean run on his VMAX so if this thing goes lean halfway through the flight he's dead this is the man who never gets a lean run on his VMAX okay there we go VMAX time Rick Campbell editor of the Nest newsletter just bought a yogurt shop getting fatter by the moment things is at the end of a contest when the air is good and it's absolutely beautiful right now and when you get to fly each other's planes it's really a thrill really a lot of fun and before we leave we will get to do some flying on some of these OPP other people's planes Ladies and gentlemen, these are not eggs. Do not, do not readjust your TV. It's not Easter time. These are not eggs. Anyway, as always, this is 
has turned out to be a good meet. Even though this morning, and you've seen the tape of the rain, it paid to stick around. It was a good day. Except for the fact that my wife is going to kill me for sticking around. Ah, what the hell. We did our antiquing. Now look, these are not eggs, ladies and gentlemen. Measure the width times the height. These are not eggs. Rick's Egg Company. Oh my God. We never critique flights, do we? Ah, we're running out of battery. We're not going to get much more on video today, I don't think. But we did have a hell of a day. We don't know who won the mask cup yet. We'll get that on as soon as we find out. If we find out, we don't know. I don't know if Karen will let me stay any longer. We have a good, good long ride home today, that's for sure. Scott Smith's a project plane that they all built the same plane. Built and finished at Scotty's house. He has one night a week he devotes to helping people. Uh oh. Don't want to be videoing any crashes, but Bill Hummel from Albany, one of the people, and there's several others here that have taken advantage of uh, Scotty's hospitality and built the plane at his house. And we hope when we get the uh, shop at your place finished, uh, we'll be able to do the same thing and maybe have a Saturday or one night a week that we can uh, have little classes to help people. It'll be a neat thing. Jim Damarell, Spring Valley, New York. One of the people that's uh, one of the regular friends of mine that's over the house or shop or whatever on a regular basis. And we have the painting of this plane, the clear, when Jim did that on video. Some of the uh, woodwork, I think, is on some of the videos. Jim's been one of the more helpful people in helping other people in the club. And good luck to him right now. Now, what he has to do is take his the, the score that he won advanced with and better to score. That's the deal here. Now my score went up 6%. Obviously, what he's trying to do is go up as much as possible or not go down as the case may be. Now Jim hasn't won the mask cup yet, uh, so I guess most of the people in the crowd here are pulling for him.
Super Tiger 51 with a Brian Ether carbon prop. Brian Ether, of course, makes those new they're colored blue, the, uh, the thin two blades, they work real well. early. Yeah, Borelli and Ortiz and Lampione, they all went home. The weather cleared up. Turned out to be a great day. I got to fly four or five people's planes. I got to fly Busso's plane. I got to fly Ron Connor's PM. All good flying solid planes. And I think that's one of the beauties of the Pattern Master Cardinal design is you can build it so many different ways at so many weights. As long as you engineer up the nose and don't have the wing flimsy. You can even put a little bit too much paint on it. It's an excellent design. Give Big Jim full credit for that. He is absolutely the boobastic one, the bombastic one. Anyway, enough of the Big Jim nonsense. Damarell's official flight. Anyway, we'll waddle over there, 
See what the story is? You need a hand, Jim?